I get a witness up in here that can testify that I tried them for myself oh taste and see that the Lord is good amen we truly give honor on this Sunday morning to the most high God what a mighty God we serve a God that loves us in spite of ourselves a God who is a God of mercy God of forgiveness, amen, a God of a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh chance, amen, he's a God who upholds us in his right hand, he is our portion, he's our strong tower, amen, that's what the Bible says, he's our eternal father, amen, prince of peace, hallelujah, so he's our everything, and so this morning we come to worship him, in spirit and in truth. Let me always, I seem like I have to always remind folks, even online folks, Sunday is a day of worship for saints. Amen. Sunday is a day that we come together corporately, collectively, amen, to worship the Most High God, to give his name the highest praise. Amen. Amen. We're getting away from that. Amen. But we have to get back to being God's people and worshiping him like he has prescribed us to worship him. Amen. Thank you, choir. Y'all jamming. Y'all getting down. Y'all getting it in. Oh, Jesus. I want to see if these brothers can do something. On Tuesday, brothers, y'all meet on Tuesday. Amen. The last four weeks have been challenging for us as believers, especially here at Rooted, because we've been locked into a series of sermons which focuses on us growing up as Christians. Amen. Us growing up. Amen. And believers need to grow up spiritually. Amen. Can I get a witness? And we've been looking at some different elements that we need, spiritual elements that we need to help us to grow up in our faith. Amen. I've come to realize that churches are filled, churches are filled with a lot of I think that I'm grown up Christian. Amen. You remember your parents would say, you think you're grown. Amen. And my mom would say, you think you're grown. My dad would say, y'all think y'all grown. Amen. And we got a lot of folks filling the church to think that they're grown up. But spiritually, amen, and biblically, we see that that's not the case. Amen. If the truth be told, many are still babies in their faith. Amen. And so we've been looking at a series that we're going to close out today because we got to get ready for Resurrection Sunday, amen? And we got to start preaching some messages to get us ready for the celebration of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so we've been looking at a series of sermons entitled, It's About That Time. It's about that time. Let's grow up. It's about that time. Let's grow up. And we've been looking at some series of sermons focused on growing up, amen, that we need to grow up in the Lord, amen. And it's been time. Some of us are 50, 60, 70 years old, amen. But if the truth be told, and maybe I'm not talking to you, maybe I'm talking to whoever, amen. If the truth be told, many are still babies in their walk with Jesus Christ, amen. And for the last four sermons, We've been in deep, deep, extracting exegetical exegesis out of scriptures what the word of God gives us to help us grow up. Amen. And I didn't want to end this series without touching on one more. I was going to close this last week, but the Holy Spirit said that you got to hit this one last, one last crucial um, um, element about growing up that is totally disregarded. 
It's a totally disregarded spiritual discipline. But it's essential. It's essential for our spiritual growth. So the Holy Spirit said, no, you close it out after you preach this last sermon on what it takes, what it needs, what we need to grow up. And I would like to look at the last element of growth. And this is going to be a topical perspective. Amen. We're not going to exegete. I don't have a primary scripture that we're going to come from. We're going to do a round robin. It's a selective scripture. It's topical. Amen. And, and back in October of 2008, I'm going to make sure I'm correct with that date. Could be off uh, months. ESPN, I love it. On Mondays, my little bit of time I get, I, I watch ESPN. I catch up on uh, uh, sports and things of that nature, golf, football. ESPN came up with a segment during the show back in 2008. Some of our sports guys, you might be able to attest to this. The sports analysts uh, came up with a segment, and, and any time that they will see a play, uh, when a person or, or when they want to describe a play or a series of plays that made no sense. You know, they would rewind it. They would say, you, or baseball or, or, or basketball or football, and it made no sense. It made no sense. This play just made no sense, amen? And, and they, would, they would scratch their head over this play. And they came over a whole segment, and I don't know if they still do it or not. I haven't seen it lately. They come over a whole segment um, because it was unbelievable. The play was unbelievable. And they came up with a whole segment that was entitled, Come on, man. Y'all remember that? Anybody sports guys, y'all remember that? We got Brother Durrell in there. You remember that? Come on, man. Right? And, and if you heard that before, raise your hand. Amen? I want you to look at your neighbor and say, come on, man. Well, here we go. Let's close out this series. Because based on all the Lord has done for us, I just want you to think about it for a minute. All the Lord has done for us, has blessed us, saved us. Lord, we're on our way to heaven, y'all. Huh? Healed us. Some of us had, only the Lord did that. Amen. Healed us. Restored us. Amen. Opened up doors for us. Amen. Amen. It wasn't affirmative action. It was the Lord. Amen. Opened up doors for us. Provided for us. And most importantly, loved us. Loving us. Amen. All that he has done. Let's preach from the topic this morning. Come on, man. Grow up in your giving. Oh, come on. We got to grow up in our giving. All that the Lord has done for us, made a way for us. Love us. Forgive us. Come on, man. Come on. We got to grow up. We got to grow up in this spiritual discipline that nobody wants to talk about called giving. Amen? Amen. amen. You got to grow up in this. Amen? And, and as we look at this, watch this. I ain't get too many amens with that when he hit that giving thing. Amen? Come on, man. As we look at this, we must understand and, and walk with this. Amen? Understand that, that the Apostle Paul, uh, he, he, he tells the um, Macedonian churches over in 2 Chronicles, I mean, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 8, 7. And, and listen to the encouragement. Like I said, we're doing a topical. He says, but since you excel in everything, you excel in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, in love, we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. He says you're, you're, you're excelling in all these different aspects. But make sure, watch this, Rooted. Make sure that we excel in giving. Amen. 
And, 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 and we have to understand something. I want you to catch this today because this is not a, a popular topic to talk about. See, see, my job as your pastor is to teach you what God says. Amen. Amen. That's my job. To teach you what God says, watch this, about the money that he's given you. Yeah. Let me say that again. About the money that he has given you. Amen. And my job is not to motivate you. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Amen. My job is to teach you. Amen. And so as we look at this, watch this. I want you to listen closely because we're talking about growing up. We're talking about now, watch this, growing up as a Christian, amen? Growing up as a Christian means that I also grow up in my giving. Amen. Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. amen? And so as we look at this, we must understand, listen carefully to this and understand this. It, it's, it's, it's something how saved church folks treat God. It's something how we treat God. When it comes to the worship of giving. Now, if the truth be told, watch this. If the truth be told, if we were corporate executives, amen, and if we were corporate executives and if we handled the company that we work for, monies, the way that we handle God's monies, we'd be locked up. They would lock us up for embezzlement. They would lock us up for misappropriation of funds. The way that we handle God's money, it's, it's a travesty. The way that we do with God's money. Now, y'all walk with me. Y'all got quiet. Amen. Y'all was just, man, uh, uh, there's no way. They was getting it, weren't they? Oh, no way. I can live without you. Come on, man. We got to grow up in our giving. Please get this. Don't, don't miss this. Uh, if you're on online, don't go to the kitchen. Don't get up to get something to drink. Amen. Uh, but listen, I want you to grab this real quick. If if we if we are not giving unto the Lord, if we are not giving unto the Lord sacrificially, lovingly, watch this, cheerfully, graciously, amen, worshipfully, generously. Here we go. Here we go. Then we're not growing spiritually. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. If we're not giving with these elements of giving, amen, uh, cheerfully and graciously and sacrificially and lovingly, watch this. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care how much Bible you know. You're not actually growing up spiritually. Amen. You're not growing up spiritually. Amen. And, and, and you may say, well, I'm preaching. Uh, well, I, I, I'm serving. I'm singing, I'm, I'm helping, I'm, I'm witnessing, I'm in Bible study, amen, great stuff, great stuff, amen, great stuff. But the question on the floor is, are you giving? Are you giving? And a lot of times we think that we're growing up, we're spiritually matured, but if your giving is not growing with you, then you're not growing up. And so the Lord, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, before you close this series, because a lot of folks are walking around thinking that they're spiritually grown, but their giving hasn't grown. Because when you grow, your mind is transformed. And when your mind is, we're going to talk about this, when your mind is transformed, your actions are transformed. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. We're preaching from the topic. Come on, man. Grow up in giving. Amen? And so watch this, church. Our love for God the Father and his son, his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, should be revealed in more than just lip service, but also how we honor and worship him with the money. Tell your neighbor the money. money. That he gave us. Tell your neighbor that he gave us. Amen. To hold on to. He he gave us some money to hold on to. Amen. And now, now granted, folks, folks rather talk about, rather hear the preacher talk about blessings, healing, deliverance, peace, joy. Amen. But but how can we experience any of these things if we ignore and sidetrack the issue of God's money? Amen. 
Watch this. Hold on to your seats. The giving of God's money is spiritual. I'm teaching today. The giving of God's money is spiritual. We need to grow up and we need to understand this. For some reason, we don't, we don't understand this. The giving of God's money is spiritual. Now, now watch this, watch this. A topical sermon. The giving of money is not only is it spiritual, watch this, but the giving of money is doctrinal. It's doctrinal. Amen? It's doctrinal. You know what, what, what check out, check out how the Apostle Paul, he puts, the Apostle Paul, uh, one, of the, one of the greatest writers of the New Testament, he puts money in the same context with great doctrinal truth. Amen. And see, in the, in the original Greek manuscripts, if you were to read this in the original Greek manuscripts, there would be no chapter division. There would be no chapter one, chapter two. It would be a continuous dialogue. Amen. And so what he does is this. He does it. Paul tells us without missing a beat in First Corinthians, when you get a chance, look at First Corinthians. Amen. The 15th chapter. We're going to be talking about that as we work our way up to Resurrection Sunday. And Paul tells us in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse three, he talks about how Christ died for our sins. Talks about how he died and how he died for our sins. Isn't that doctrine? Can I get an amen? That's some good stuff. And then over in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, uh, how Christ was resurrected on our behalf from the dead. Three days resurrected. Jesus came back from the dead. Amen. Isn't that, is that doctrine? That's some good stuff. And then, and then he goes down in, in the 15th chapter of verse, in verse 50, and he talks about one day our bodies will be transformed, and we also are going to take on resurrection bodies. Is that doctrine? That's some good stuff. But then he comes on down in, in verse 51 of 15, and he talks about the, the parousia. He talks about when Jesus comes back. In this second coming to rule, amen, in this, in this great coming, amen. Is that doctrine? That's some good stuff. But then in the, in the conjunction, uh, it, with no separation, without no hesitation, Paul goes right into it, and then he pops up 1 Corinthians, the 16 um, chapter, verses 1 and 2, he says, after he says everything about the resurrection, and after he says everything about uh, uh, new bodies, and after he says everything about Jesus died for us on the cross, then he says over in 1 Corinthians 16, now, now, the collection. Whoa! Paul, you just got finished giving us doctrine. Man, doctrine. And now he says, I don't want you, without missing a beat, he says, now let's talk about the collection. Mm. For the Lord's people. Oh, Lord have mercy. Huh? Do what I told the Galatian churches to do on the first day of every week. Each one of you should set aside a sum of money. Amen? In keeping, whoa, in keeping with that money that I bless you with. In keeping with your income, in keeping with that salary that I allowed you to get. Oh, can I get a can I get an amen up in here somewhere? In keeping with your income, don't don't look at somebody else's income, but in keeping with the money that I put in your possession, saving it up so that when I come, no collection will have to be made. Did y'all see that? See, see, don't 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 tell me that giving isn't doctrinal. Amen. Because it comes right after the death and the resurrection and, 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 and the body uh, uh, being resurrected in the second coming. And now he says, let's talk about the collection. It's doctrine. Somebody online need to hear this. Somebody in church need to hear this. Amen. See, since the pandemic, hold on to your seats. I feel like last week I feel like talking a little bit. I feel like talking a little bit today, too. Since the, since the pandemic, we got a lot of folks who have been bootlegging church. You know how you, you remember back in the day, and I know this wasn't y'all. I know it wasn't y'all. Remember how some of us used to bootleg cable? I know 
Brother Mike, we used to get over on Comcast. Y'all remember how bootleg the BG&E? You, you don't never taking somebody else's lecture from, oh, Lord Jesus. We got folks who bootleg church. Huh? They bootleg it. Amen? Listen to the sermons every Sunday. Huh? Sitting in the living room, listening to sermons and attending live Bible studies. Amen? But not giving consistently to the New Testament church. That's called bootlegging church. Because he says here, he says on the first day of the week, he says you to bring it to the storehouse. Isn't that the, the Lord, y'all know when we preach Bible up in here. Isn't that what the words say? And so watch this. He says in the command that you are to bring it to the storehouse. Huh? Now, remember last week I said that we was don't get angry, be slow to anger. See, now I'm preaching somebody getting angry. Man, you could talk all day about Jesus. Just leave my money alone. Listen, saints, when you and I place our faith in Jesus Christ, we should in time. We should in time be transformed into a faithful and sacrificial giver. Amen. As God is growing us and as he's taking us from faith to faith and we're starting to grow up, we're starting to, we're starting to see him for who he is and, and we're starting to worship him and, and the beauty of holiness. And, and now, watching this, we're taking off the diapers now and, and we're now getting the, the infamil and, and, we're getting the, and we're throwing the bottle away. Now, we got a fork and we got a spoon and we're starting to, even a steak knife, and we're starting to eat the meat of the word. And as we're starting to grow up, we should be growing up even in our giving. Huh? Come on, man. We should be growing up in our giving, amen? He says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy. What is that? Everything that's from chapter 11 of Romans all the way back, all that the Lord has done for us, justifies freely by his grace. Huh? All that he's done, chose you. He chose you in chapters 9 and, 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 and 10, how he chose us. All that he did for us, he says now. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen? Pleasing to God. This is your true, proper worship. And do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, watch this, saints, real quick, as we close out this last um, sermon in this series. As we grow up in this transformed life, it means that now how our commitment, our philosophies, our ideas change, and we begin to grow up. And our faith. And we understand, we understand this. I understand, Pastor what ain't nobody got to tell me this. I understand, watch this, my kingdom responsibility. See, when you grow up, watch this. You, you ain't got to worry about people all up in your ears and you getting tossed to and fro. Because watch this, when you grow up, you know what God has called you to do. You know your kingdom responsibility. And now we grow up, we, we understand our kingdom responsibility. And you may say, well, define to me once again, Pastor Webb, what is kingdom uh, stewardship? What is the stewardship? And kingdom stewardship is the biblical truth that speaks to all believers, not just to the preachers, not just to some folks, amen, but speaks to all believers, each one is given the responsibility of managing God's affairs, his stuff, until Jesus returns back on the earth. All of us, everyone in this, in this sanctuary, everybody online right now, watch this. If you're a born-again believer, God has given you a stewardship. And everything that he's placed in your hands, watch this, he's going to come back and say, what did you do with the stuff that I gave you? That's what he's going to say because watch this it's a stewardship if you ever get a chance you look at Luke 19 we don't have time this morning study that verses 1 to 27 and it, it's a parable about 10 servants and 10 talents or 10 um, um, minutes right 
Uh, and, and the king, he gave 10 to 1 and 5 to 1 and 1 to 1. And, and, and if you look at that parable, it's talking about the Lord giving it to his servants. A responsibility, he gave him different amounts, just like you and I. That's why, why I said, you don't, you don't need to count my income, you, you need to count yours. Because that's the responsibility God has given you, right? And so watch this. He's given each one a responsibility. But, but if you ever get a chance to read that parable, look at the third servant. The third servant, instead of taking what the king gave him and investing it and pouring it back so when the king comes back, he gets a return on his money. The, the, the third servant takes what the king gave him and he buries it. And guess what the king said? And this is what, this is what mess evangelicals and so-called Christians up. If you get down to the last verse of that, 26 and 27, this is what the king says. Uh, that wicked servant. This is what he says. Hold on. Hold on to your seats. He says, kill him. They're all my enemies. What they're saying that the one that buried it didn't do nothing with it, didn't want to invest it, watch this, was an unbeliever. That's hard truth. And so if you look at this, watch this. It's not by coincidence and it's not by luck because I don't believe in luck. That's worldly stuff. I, we're lucky. That's hopefully you're rooted. Hopefully you took that word and threw it out. Amen. Get that word luck out of your out of your vocabulary. I, I remember when I went in the, in the um, basic train, I was in Paris Island. When I got in Paris Island Marine Corps boot camp, they said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take I, me and you out of your vocabulary. Can you imagine talking without saying I, me and you? We did it. You take this luck out of your vocabulary. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's not by coincidence. It's not by no luck or chance that you've been given a measure of wealth. Everybody in this room, everybody online has a measure of wealth to take care of, to invest, so that when the king returns, he'll be able to look at our stewardship. Amen? And not just money. It's other stuff too, your, your, your talent, your giftedness, all these other things. But today we're talking about the money. Amen? And so as you look at this, we must understand that there is a stewardship. Now, the spiritual immature person, the spiritual immature, well, let me put it like this. Spiritually immature or spiritually immature folks are robbed. They're robbed from all that they can receive from the Lord because they're spiritually immature. And, and they're really, they're robbing themselves. And watch this, someone needs to hear this because you may be in this category. Immaturity thinks this. This is what immaturity thinks. I'm given to the church. That's immaturity. That's spiritual immaturity. Well, well, I, I, I'm given to that church down there. No, 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 boo. No, no. Let's get it right because you are spiritually immature. See, see, maturity recognize that I'm giving as unto the Lord. See, my giving is unto the Lord because the Lord has commanded me. Amen. And so it's a big difference. It changes from an earthly thing to an internal thing. Y'all walk with me today because we got some folks thinking, well, I'm giving to the church. No, you're giving first as unto the Lord. Can I get a witness up in here? Come on, man. Come on, man. Watch this. And, 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 and the model that we can look at for the New Testament church, I ain't talking Old Testament. I'm talking New Testament church. The model is the Macedonians. Amen? And, and we can look at the model of, that the Macedonian believers, we can see their generosity. And watch this. Let's look at what their generosity was based upon. Look what it says over in 2 Corinthians 8, verses 3 and 5. Look what it says. It says, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able. Walk with me now. I'm going to let the word saturate. They gave as much as they were able. And even, here we go, even beyond their ability. And I want that to res resonate. Even beyond their ability. See, giving is... Giving, it should be a sacrifice. Watch this. I don't know about you, but I don't know, but every month when I write that mortgage check, I feel it. Maybe you don't, but I do. And watch this. When we give a sacrifice to the Lord, it should be felt. 
It should be felt because it's an offering. And so he said they gave beyond their ability. Amen. Entirely, watch this, entirely on their own. It was on their own. Look at their heart. They urgently pleaded with us. Can you imagine folks that can't wait to get to church so that they can give? Breaking down the door, oh, boom, 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 I'm ready to give. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing. Look at the privilege. Unto an almighty God, a holy God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills, the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. You know, uh, they, live in a, they live over in a place that socially, economically, um, 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 depraved or, or don't have all the resources but guess what they gave beyond their expectation they didn't let the social status keep them in a place of holding because they knew that God could bless them and make a way for them and they went beyond what was expected of them and they gave themselves here we go they gave themselves first of all to the Lord huh did y'all see that? See, as we look at this, we have to understand, uh, you have to understand, get that. Giving was first unto Christ. Come on, man. Come on. This is grown up stuff right here. This is grown up stuff right here. Amen? This is grown up stuff. Amen? Watch this. And so grab this. As we look at this, look at this. Let's grab this. Grab this warning. Look at the warning that Jesus gives. Amen. We're talking about we're talking about growing up in our giving. Now watch this. Some of us have been in church a long time, but our giving don't reflect it. And you may say, well, 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 Pastor, you know, that's personal. That's between me and the Lord. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> uh, watch this. You say it's personal. But the question is, is it biblical? Amen. And so as we look at this, grab this warning. Jesus gives this. Watch this. When a person loves money, they're useless to God. Look what Jesus says. Well, don't go. Oh, I just heard the temperature change a little bit. I heard somebody say, oh. Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. Either they will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. And he uses, he uses the word mammon. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve both God. And what he's talking about here, nothing wrong with having money. Look, I pray that I wish we all had a couple million somewhere. Amen? Something wrong with having money. Money is amoral. You heard me teach this before. That means money isn't bad or good. Money's amoral, but when you love it, that's where the sin is. That's where the sin is when you love your money. Because what God says, you love your money more than you love me. Amen. And you put your money before you put me. And that's called idolatry. And you can't serve both. You, you can't. You got to love me. Amen. And it's idolatry. And see, and so there is something when when. When we love the money and the stuff more than we love God. Huh? That's called idolatry. And so he says this, and then Jesus gave the other warning. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard is it? How hard is it? After, after he dealt with the rich young ruler, he, he says to his disciples, he says, how hard is it for the rich? It's not wrong with being rich, but it's something when richness got you. And he says, how Hard is it for rich to enter the kingdom of God? He's saying it's hard because of their love for their money. So watch this. Back to my statement. When a person loves money, they're useless to God. But then watch this warning. Watch this. Look at the second warning. In the pursuit of money and obtaining money, watch this. And I want you to get this. We have to make sure, watch this, that we don't forget about God. Man, some of us are fast-tracking, man. We rolling. God opened up so many doors for us, man. We going up the corporate ladder. We, uh, doors are opening up, man. We getting, we getting pay raises and stuff. God just, can I get a, God just blessing us. We, man, we are great. 
Come on now, come on now. We can testify. This ain't no trick thing. I ain't trying to trick you. Amen. It's the truth. We're buying homes and we're buying vehicles and, and we, got, uh, we got our homes filled with nice furniture. God is blessing us. But in the midst of all of that, watch this. You can't forget about him. You can't forget about him. We get an education. We all the stuff now, and it's good stuff. But he says, you don't forget about me. Look what he says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 through 14. He says, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws. His decrees that I'm giving you today. Otherwise, watch this. When you eat and are satisfied, and when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and your flocks grow large, your silver and your gold increase, and, and all you have is multiplied. Because there's nothing wrong with the multiplication. There's nothing wrong with it. Amen? Then your heart will become proud. And you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You have the home. You got the furniture. Every room, every room got something in it. Praise the Lord. You got the cars, SUVs, the boats. Amen. Am I right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. And ain't nothing for you to be ashamed of. You should thank the Lord for it. But what the Lord says this to the church, to his redeemed people, and all of that, why says you don't forget about me? You don't, you don't get proud in your heart that you forget about me. See, I keep hearing all the time. I've been hearing this circulating in the church all the time. Uh, 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 I keep hearing save um, uh, church folks uh, talking about times. Times are tough. Yes, it is. See that? <laughs> times are tough. Yeah, it is. But if times are so tough, why we keep buying new cars? New clothes? Shoes covered? For, shoes all fall? You ever see shoes falling out of closets? Shoes and fall out of closets. What the world? We kicking shoes back in? Coach, so many coats. Can't even close the door. Huh? Concert tickets. Chris Brown's coming to town. Uh oh. Payment plans for cruises. Beautifying our homes and our yards. But times are tough. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. Come on, man. You said, Pastor, you, 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 you meddling now. You meddling, but I'm telling you the truth. We're bragging on God. How he has blessed us. We're making 60, uh, 80,000, 100,000, some of us 150, and praise the Lord. Some of us even more than 150, uh, 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 but God isn't getting a tenth. God ain't getting a fifth. But, but, yeah, I love that. Come on, man. Let me meddle for a minute. Can I meddle for one second? All right. You made 100 grand. God barely sees 5,000. He maybe get 2,000. But you'd have made 100. Come on, man. I got to grow us up. See, see, this is the kind of growing up stuff that don't feel good. But watch this. When you get to eternity, if you could see me walking on the streets of gold, because you always be walking on the streets of gold, and, and, and you may say, thank you, pastor, for giving me that word. Because watch this. What you do now is going to meet you in eternity. You ain't got to believe me. You ain't got to, you ain't got to think, so, think it's going to be so, but it's going to meet you. I remember some of y'all in here came up in the 80s. I remember making $6 an hour. Y'all remember that? $6 an hour. I had four children. Six dollars an hour had to had to make it do what it do, amen. I remember six. Hey, anybody remember making fifteen dollars an hour? Making twenty thousand a year and 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 then thirty thousand a year. But now we're making six figures. 
Come on, man. Come on, y'all. So as we look at this, watch this. Let's, let's, let me give you this. Listen, saints. We must learn how to glorify God with our money. And God wants glory out of the money he has entrusted to each of us. It is not yours. Lord, have mercy. You're not. Watch this. When you leave this earth and a dollar going with you. Our financial stewardship is probably the most abused area in our spiritual life. Man, we, we preaching well, we teaching well, we singing well, we helping well, we serving well, we witnessing well, but are we giving well? Huh? Are we giving well? So watch this, watch this. I'm going to share with you real quick, I'm going to share with you a quick, some selective scriptures to help grow us up. Now what I want you to do, this is a little bit different than what I usually do, I want you to look at the word. I want the word to find its way in your heart. And, and so I want the word to grow us up. I want you to meditate on it. I want you to read it. And then I want you to swallow it for yourself. Amen. That's what I want to do, amen? And I want you to do that, amen? So watch this. Biblical giving or, 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 or biblical generous giving, I should say. It's generous for the New Testament. Generous giving takes the focus off the giver and places it all on the glory of God. Now, here we go. Here we go. few scriptures and I'm out your way. I know y'all can't wait. Somebody online already cut me off. They, they done with all that. They heard enough of that noise. Amen. The first thing is this. Look what it says. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Watch this. Watch the word. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops, all your income, and the amplified. Then your bonds will be abundantly filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. I got somebody in here right now that can testify. They believe God and put this into practice and watch this. Uh, their, their, their vats are filling over. They, their covers are filled. There's always something. Every time they reach in the barrel, they can always, they can always pull something out of the barrel. Always, I can, I can always get something out of that barrel. And so what it means is that our proper, we should put proper weight on our wealth. That's what it means. That means you need to investigate your wealth. And you need to stop being afraid and, and not trusting and, and not being faithful. And you need to put a proper weight on your wealth and give God your very best. You give God the best of your increase. Can I get an example? And this is not boasting. This is not me doing this. I'm doing this to grow us. I'm not boasting. My boast is in the Lord. Man, this week, first lady said, well, Pastor Webb, oh, well, Kevin. Every once in a while, Pastor Webb. Guess what? We got blessed this week. What? Anytime I hear that, what? 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 You know, this, this, this year, we got a tax refund. Praise the Lord. It's an increase. Can I get a witness? So, so now, since I got the increase, First Lady and I, now we got to put proper weight on the wealth. Am I right about it? And so now, since God has given us an increase, this is what happens when you grow up and you recognize that he didn't have to do it. But he did it anyhow. And so now I got to put proper weight on the increase. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the proper weight. Hey, come here, Deke. Come here. And this is the tithe off of the check. Because, watch this. It was an increase that now I got to put proper weight on. Y'all ain't walking with me. See, see, somebody will run out and take God's money, that increase, and go get you something. But God said, ho, 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 I just gave you an increase, and I need you to put a proper weight on it. When you get a raise, I should get a raise. When you get an increase, I should get an increase. When you go up the corporate ladder, I should go up the corporate ladder. Am 
I'm going to write about it. See, so you got to grow up. You want to be spiritual. But to be spiritual, you got to grow up. You got to grow up in your giving. Huh? Yeah, you can get mad, but I'm going to teach it anyway. Look at this one. Malachi, real quick. Malachi 3, 7 through 12. Don't cheat God. Read it for yourself. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Talking to Israel. Now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's army. But you ask, how can we return? We have never gone away. Verse 8, and I'm reading out the NLT. I like the NLT. Should people cheat God? King James says, will a man rob God? Yet you have cheated me. I like that word cheated. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you, Lord? When did we cheat you, almighty God? You have cheated me in the tithes and offerings due to me. You're under a curse for the whole nation have been cheating me. Look what he says over here. Look at verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, watch the blessing. And then watch this. And this is where your faith comes in. I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. And then he says this. He challenges us. God challenges us. He says, you go ahead and try me. You go ahead. I want you. Go ahead and try me. Huh? Put me to the test. And then watch this. Your crops will be abundant. And I will guard them from insects and disease and your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe. Huh? Did y'all see that? See, what we got to do, all this amening, we got to start believing. We got to start believing. Look at another one real quick. We're done. Watch this. He says this. Most importantly, watch this. Watch this one real quick. I like this stuff. It's some good stuff, isn't it? Come on, man. Tell your neighbor, come on, man. Most importantly, remember how you got it. Remember how you got it. Remember how you got it. Remember when you was in that one bedroom. Now you in four and five. Some of us six, seven, amen. You must remember the Lord your God for he is the one who gives ability to get wealth. Yes. It's, not your, it's not your college education. That's a supplement. Amen? That's a good thing. You need college. It's a supplement. But it's the Lord who gives you wealth. If you do this, he will confirm his covenant that he has made by an oath by your ancestors. He says, remember how you get what you get. Amen? And then watch this. Watch this. Go on down. Watch this. And then, and then he says this. I love this. Uh, over here he says, and then this is the blessing. This is the blessing part. I want you to look at the scripture for yourself. I want to find this way in your heart. This is the blessing. When your heart is right, your giving is going to get right. When your heart is right, man, man, your, you, your giving is going to get right. Amen? Look what he says. Get free. Look, look at this. This is what God loves. He loves this. Those that he has saved through his son, he loves it. He says in Exodus 35, 21, all whose hearts were stirred and whose spirits were moved came and brought their sacred offering to the Lord. Amen. Hearts were moved, man. Yeah. They brought all the materials needed for the tabernacle. It says that their hearts were moved, and it means that they gave freely. They gave freely. Remember, I can only teach you. But the Holy Spirit is the one who motivates you. Amen. Amen. But watch this. Watch this. Get this word. Get this word. Come on. We're done. Watch this. And then watch this. I love this. And then we are to give obediently and believe faithfully. Look at this. This is a command. This is a command straight from the chief shepherd. Amen. Straight from the eternal God. Straight from the Savior. Straight from the soon and coming king. This is, uh, this is a, 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 a command. And look what he says. He opens up in, in Luke 6. He says, give. And it will be given to you. In good measure. 
Press down. Y'all like singing that song. Shaking together. We singing it, but we got to do it. Amen. Shaking together and running over will be poured unto your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I want y'all to see this word. We're almost done. Watch this. Watch this. But then the, watch this one. And then he says this, and God loves this. Give cheerfully. Why? Why? Give cheerfully. Why? Because I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. Huh? If you watch this. Let me just, let me just go, go. If you don't love the Lord, you won't see the Lord. I love you, Lord. Each man should give as he has decided in his or her heart. He should not give wishing he could keep it. I love the NLV with this. Or he should not give it if he feels he has to give. Oh, I'm sorry. Or he should not give it if he, if he feels he has to give. God loves a man who gives because he wants to give. I Man, I love that translation. Isn't that? Oh, take that. Meditate on that. Amen. You know how we got. Uh, um, church, well, you got. Uh, no, we ain't going to do that. I'm just going to preach the word. I ain't going to try to coerce you. and all. No, no, it's the word. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. And you, listen, and this is a hard truth I'm going to give. I know some pastors may look at this and say, he is crazy for saying that. But I'm going to be crazy for one second. If you don't want to give, catch this. Don't give. If it's not in your heart to give, don't give. Don't give. Because if it's not from a willing heart, and if it's not from a willing spirit, then guess what? Hold on. It's not acceptable to God. You ain't going to hear too many pastors say that. Amen. He says this. He says, if you want to give, you should give because, watch this, it's in your heart to give. Not because you've been made to give or, or you've been coerced to give or you fell under a gimmick to give. No, that's foolishness. You know, uh, they gave a thousand. I need a thousand over here and I need, no, 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 no. No, God says, I don't want that. I want it to come from your heart because you love me. And then we close with this one. Watch this. Give because I'm thankful for what Jesus did for me. Lord, have mercy. Come on, man. I'm not commanding you, 2 Corinthians, I'm not commanding you to do this, but I'm testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. You know, here we go, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we go. Though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. So that by his poverty, he could make you rich. I don't know if you know it today. I don't know what's going on in your mind, but I stop by. If, you, if you're born again, you're rich. His death has made you rich. And, when, and, and I don't know, and my giving is like this. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah for the victory. But then I like the psalmist when the psalmist says, he says, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits who forgives all sins and heal all our diseases and redeemed our life from the pit and crowned us with love and compassion. But when I, but when I think about the old hymn writer and he, and he wrote down amazing grace, how sweet the sin that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And because of that, nobody got to tell me how to give to the Lord because he's been good to me. Do I got anybody in the house that will testify the Lord has been good? Come on, man. Lord. We got to grow up.
and out giving. The no name lady, I'm done. No name woman in the Bible. She ain't got no name, but she's known all throughout history, even into eternity. But she ain't named in the Bible. She's a woman with the alabaster box. And she sets the example for giving. Jesus eating, as I close, just get this. Jesus eating at a Pharisee's house by the name of Simon. A woman from the town. Scripture says, the Bible says, a woman who lived a sinful life. Some suggest she was a prostitute. She learned that Jesus was at the house. So she brought her most precious, the most dearest thing to her, the most expensive thing to her, her, her prized possession. And she brought her alabaster jar of perfume. I don't know if she was a prostitute and she needed to, to dull herself up. I don't know, but it was all that she had. It was precious to her. All that she had. And she stood behind Jesus at his feet. And the scripture says she started weeping. And then she began to wet his feet with her tears. Lord have mercy. And then, and then, then she wiped them with her hair. And then she kissed them. And then she poured on Jesus an offering to perfume all that she had, her, her very best. She poured out the alabaster jar. And the Pharisees, they criticized like some people do. You don't need to give like that. You don't need to give your best. The Pharisees criticized. They said, if he knew who was touching him, if he only knew who was touching him, and, and Jesus turned to the Pharisees. He says, I came in, but you didn't do nothing for me. You didn't wash my feet. You didn't do nothing for me, but, but Jesus turned and he forgave the woman of all her sin. Well, well, that leaves us with the key here to generous, sacrificial, worshipful, thankful giving. Jesus says, to them that whoever has been forgiven of much they're the ones that love me so much when you know that you have been forgiven of all your sins that all your sins have been cast into the sea of forgiveness when you remember that you was once in darkness far from the peaceful shore when you remember that there was no one that could help you but there was a man from Galilee that spoke your name then you begin to love much because you've been forgiven of much that's where sacrificial giving is when you know that you have been forgiven of much, you're going to love him with all that you have within you. Do I got any witnesses in the house? I'm going to love you, Lord. You've been good to me. You made a way for me. And I'm going to give you my very best. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. It's about that time, brothers and sisters. Come on, man. Let's grow up, and I'll give it. May God bless you. In heaven, rich and small. Let's grow up. 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 Grow up. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, oh God. We magnify your holy and righteous name. King of kings and Lord of lords. Maybe one here today. Watch this. You need to be born again. I ain't talking about church. Watch this. 
You need to confess your sin. You need to call upon the name that's above every name. The name of Jesus. Every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. And proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He who believes my word and believe on him who has sent me. Shall pass from death over into life. Shall not come to condemnation but shall pass from death over into life. Today is a day. Today you can say, Lord, save me. Jesus is the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin of the world. You were born in sin. You were shaped in iniquity. But Jesus, he's the one who is our propitiator. No one else can satisfy sin. No one else can pay the sin price except Jesus. He satisfied the sin dead and full. But you got to accept him. Is there one here today to say, Lord, save me right now? Lord, come into my heart. Just raise your hand. Lord, save me. Be my master. Be my king. I repent of my sin and I give my heart and my life to you. Is there one? Is there one online? You right now in your living room, right where you are, say, Lord, save me. Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I put my whole trust in the saving, redemptive work of Christ. And then you say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for coming into my heart. I confess you with my mouth that you're Lord. And I believe that you rose from the dead on that third day. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. If that's you online, call that number on the screen. Let us know that you have became a part of the beloved. Amen. You became a part of the family of God. Anyone in the sanctuary, praise the Lord. We're done with that series. I hope that you learned something these last five weeks. Amen. Hope that it blessed your heart. Because guess what? We got to grow up. Amen. We got to grow up. Amen. At this time, we're going to make way for our, we got a lot of stuff going on, even after church. Thank you for joining us in service today. And as always, you can visit us on our website at www.rbfchurch.com as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a safe and prosperous week.